yesterday, December 7th, 1941. We were losing the war, I might say, for a while. But the patriotism was unbelievable. This is Industrial America at War, the arsenal of democracy delivering the goods. We had a uh, victory garden, and we had about, oh, maybe an eighth of an acre. We were building ships, we were building airplanes, we were building parachutes. This edition of 20th Century Flashbacks presents images and sounds of the home front during World War II. When the United States was attacked at Pearl Harbor by the Japanese on December 7, 1941, everything in America changed. The country joined together in factories, on battlefields, and in every household in the nation. It became a time of war bonds, rationing, sacrifice, and patriotism. Of women off to work and worried families writing to their brothers, husbands, and sons serving in uniform. Dolores Doty Stevens recalls the patriotism. A teenager during the war, she now volunteers at the Wright Museum in Wolfboro, New Hampshire, a museum largely devoted to the home front. The whole country was behind the war effort and nobody complained no matter what they had to do, whether they were working hard in a factory or, or left alone to raise a family. People didn't complain, they just did the best they could. Women entered the workforce in incredible numbers during the war, a necessity with as many as 12 million men in the military. These women worked in factories, on farms, and in everyday jobs previously reserved for men. Rosie the Riveter became the title that described their collective efforts. Fran Carter and her husband John frequently wear the garb of the war years. In 1998, she became founding president of the American Rosie the Riveter Association. She was a real life Rosie at an airplane factory in Birmingham. John served as a paratrooper. He now assists his wife in preserving the legacy of Rosie the Riveter. He believes the work of women in defense factories was decisive in winning the war. Uh, back here in America, although most of the men had been called to active duty, uh, the women came in, Rosie the Riveters and Wanda the Welders and Mary the Machinist. They all came in and, let's say, manned the plants and continued to produce airplanes and, and artillery pieces and ammunition and ships to carry them over there in, so that we never lacked for materials. During the war years, the production of automobiles, like most other consumer goods, was suspended but in place of the auto came the Jeep. A unique creation of American ingenuity, the Jeep became popular, first among the military and, after the war, with the civilian population. Ron Szymanski, a Jeep historian, remembers the unification of the country, even from his perspective as a youngster. Well, I was only a kid during World War II. I was nine years old when Pearl Harbor happened, but the patriotism was unbelievable. Everybody obeyed everything. We had uh, uh, air raid alerts and blackouts, and everybody participated. And it's not like today where people would argue, but I ain't going to do it. Everybody listened to the law and, and uh, uh, tried to protect everybody, take care of everybody. May Nixon grew up in Bangor, Pennsylvania, the town that published Homefront magazine a 64-page publication that brought a little bit of the Slate Belt region of Pennsylvania to the hometown servicemen. We got closer at that time than any other particular time. The nation worked together, prayed together, and mourned together. Ultimately, there was victory, a victory that preserved our way of life. This is our 20th century flashback to the home front years of World War II.